How blow those leaves, you happy little trees? This video is a study of Martian Iron Earth crackle paint. Conventional wisdom is that the crackle paint cracks more better over a gloss coat rather than a matte one. Given how I couched that line, you can tell that not only was it something I didn't believe, but it was something I found out wasn't really true. For the purpose of my sanity and for empowering future generations, I put forth this video describing how I achieved the crackly texture and what I discovered. Martian Iron Earth is a crackle paint that's a color match for Martian Iron Crust. However, there's nothing quite like it in the current Citadel range. Martian Iron Earth produces a crackly texture similar to a dried salty riverbed, unlike Martian Iron Crust which is just grit. Leave a cycle in the comments if you want to make me try this again with the crappy paint. I'm using this Martian Iron Earth crackle paint because it matches the details sculpted onto the feet of my Squawk Hog boys. I'm going to do something new for any Beast Sagger models that I get. So let's change the basing style and start with these Squeak Hog boys. As this is a new approach for me, I decided to perform several experiments to practice and get the results I wanted. So let's get into those now. I did four test bases with six variations on the approach to achieve the results I wanted. This is not counting previous uses of crackle paste because I was not satisfied with those and I do not wish to deal with them right now. For the first of these evaluation bases, I took a perfectly normal base, put paint over it, Morn Fang brown paint, and applied the paste. The cracks I saw were very fine, so fine I did not consider them worth keeping, and the brown didn't shine through as I expected or desired. So I took this as a baseline and I painted and varnished two bases to see if matte or gloss varnish would improve the results. I used the same scorpion green for both bases. I didn't like that color either. When applying the paste, I applied it noticeably thin on one area and noticeably thick on the other. So here are the results that made this worth doing. One base has gloss varnish and the other one has matte. Can you tell which is which? I can't tell which is which, but I can see where the paste was thick and where it was thin. The thick paste crackles better. The thin paste crackles finely. So that's my thesis. You can control and vary the crackling by making it thick for big cracks or thin for fine ones. I tried all this once more with Temple Guard Blue as the paint and no varnish to check that I wasn't imagining it. The Temple Guard Blue shines through but looks horrid on the rim. So, I will use Mornfang Brown on the rim once I've done the other steps to prepare and finely detail these bases. Now, this means we're ready to proceed. Since I know how I want to do the bases, let's get started! I pegged the Squig Hog Boy's feet and the Bomb Squig's tire with a small post of ABS material. ABS is chemically similar enough to high impact polystyrene that the curing solvents we use as plastic glue work just as well on ABS pegs as they work on the sprues. Chemistry. Wow. 
While this process is a bit more elaborate and tedious than just using superglue, I'm really unsure what's going to happen with these and I don't like the idea of these gentle little flakes trying to hold up the whole weight of such mighty beasts. Now on to the actual bases, where I used epoxy rather than super glue. Actually, lately, I've been using PVA glue, and I should also mention thanks to Vicky, whose garden provides these rocks whenever she doesn't answer the door quickly enough. At the time I was preparing these bases, I was also preparing some FDM terrain. So I used the Halfords Matback Primer Rattle Can to spray these things black. I then came back with white and whited up those stones before applying a quick and simple layer of yellow ink, which might not have been the best idea. I compounded this by then applying pale blue dry paint, which also wasn't quite what I wanted, but well, I've already screwed up the bases, so let's go on with Temple Guard blue base coat before I leave these things to dry for two months in a cabinet as my anxieties and attention deficit disorder prevented me from focusing on this project until such a time. Returning to the bases on the first week or the second week of November, I applied an intentionally uneven but mostly thick and heavy coat of Martian Iron Earth. Flaunting my elite technical skills, I then set my phone to record one picture a minute while the bases dried, providing this wonderful time elapsed video that you are watching. I hadn't thought this through, and so now I have to take a break in recording in order to finish the actual bases. With the basic color and texture of the base laid out, I used Hexos Pale Sun to dry brush everything and make it look good. A tip I've heard is that if you get the bristles wet, then dry them, then put the paint on, the dry brushing will not leave as many little particles of dried paint. Because this was a dry pigment, I didn't need to do as much wiping. Hexos Pale Sun has a color reminiscent of the pollen residue that one finds around New Hampshire's lake region every spring. I don't think that the shade itself is super useful, however here it was perfect. Probably. The paint itself seems to dry out much more than I would like. I don't like that it has achieved this scrambled egg texture rather than a thick gloopy one. Leave a comment if you know what I gotta do to fix it. It took a while to cover all areas of the bases, but in the end I got there with some nice distinguishing irregularity. All that's left now is to make the whole thing look tidy by painting the rim with Mourn Fang Brown. I tried doing this with a crappy craft brush, but it seems this brush didn't have a belly that was up to the challenge. Regardless, I pushed forward. I applied two coats. Two coats produced solid coverage with a fair amount of slippage on purpose to cover up the areas of the rim that were still a bright blue. More on that later. Finally, to tidy up, I came back with the pale sun and went around the rim edge again just to bring it up a bit and hide the Morn Fang to Martian transition. So there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed this video or learned something because I learned four things. Most prominently, it's the thickness, not the underlying finish that affects the crackling. If you don't believe me, that's fine. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them test common wisdom themselves. Most annoyingly, I should have put down the Mornfang brown and let it leak up along the edge covering some of the blue before applying the iron earth crackle paste. I didn't want to get the iron earth all the way out to the rim, but I did want the brown rather than the blue to be the under color for those edges. Most embarrassingly, don't highlight yellow inked rocks, or probably any yellow rocks, with Cronus blue. And most unmentioned is that I gotta do something about the dimples in the middle of these bases before I put 
down the crackle paste, probably before I put down the blue. But I don't know what that is right now. Maybe I'll get it next time. Speaking of next time, if you like this video or want to show your support, we have a whole YouTube channel you can subscribe to, you can get notifications from, or you can even go and watch other episodes that interest you, or that don't interest you. Moving forward, we're putting out a video each week, we hope, and every third week should be a long podcast episode for listening while you do something less interesting. When the whim strikes us, we'll chew material together to be shorts as well. So, other than that, remember to check out our other social medias, including Instagram and Mastodon at this point. And as always, leave a comment if you want a pizza roll. <laughs> <laughs>